Hi everyone. If you're like me, it can be almost overwhelming to determine which tool to use throughout the workday. There are so many of them these days that it's always really nice when you can use the same tool for multiple purposes. Today, we're going to take a look at Smartsheet and how you can create a form with this tool. It's an awesome tool, Smartsheet, because you can use it for multiple purposes, such as a grid, which is very similar to Excel. You can use it for scheduling, not quite as robust as MS Project, but it does have a lot of helpful features. And then this, the form that we're going to take a look at, it operates almost like SurveyMonkey. So you can use it for surveys. You could actually use it for a form if you wanted to track help desk items. There are so many purposes, so let's get to it. You're going to want to stay put until the end because I'm going to show you not only how you can create the form, but how you can go ahead and submit a form and what it looks like on the front end, so whoever your end users are, and on the back end, so whoever's going to be pulling this information from the grid and working with it. I'm Candace Porter and let's get to it. Okay, so here we are. We are in Smartsheet, the tool, and I have another video that shows you a lot more about getting acquainted with Smartsheet for the first time. So for the purposes of today, I'm going to keep it focused on creating the actual form. However, Starting this process, you'd want to click on workspaces and select the folder that you'd like to work out of. If you don't have any folders in workspaces, you can go ahead and create one. Then once you are in your workspace, I'm working in the one called YouTube examples, you can go ahead and create a new grid. So that's what we're working with today. Create a new grid and it will allow you to name it. I have named mine office space requirements and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So once you click into Office Space Requirements or your grid, what you're going to want to do is start organizing your columns. What information do you want to capture on this form? Something that you want to be pretty strategic about so that when you're sharing the link, to the form with your end users that you know you're getting everything that you need and you don't have to keep going back to them and asking additional questions. This is my primary column here. And if you right click on it, it will allow you to rename the column. What I have done here, I have set up a form for office space requirements. So we are going into the new year and we want to check in with all of the different departments and see if they are going to need any additional space. For example, if they are bringing on new employees and their team is growing from 10 to 20 or from 20 to 200, then it's gonna be really important to know about that and to plan for that. You will see that what I've done here is set up my questions in each of the columns. How many people are currently in your department? How many people do you expect in your department in June 2021? How many people do you expect in your department in December 21? And so forth. To add a new column, in case you're not really familiar with the grid yet, you can right click on any column. And I want to insert a column to the left. That's gonna allow me to name the column. That is where I typed in each of the questions that you're seeing above in that top row. And I want to add a new one where I ask people what their actual name is. So I'm going to go ahead and name this column name. That way we'll have the department, the name, and we can go back to them and ask questions as required. When you're adding a new column, there's a lot of different options that you can select from. I want this to be a text or number column. So I want people to be able to just type in their name. And so I'm going to keep it as is. There's a lot of other options that you could select from. I often use the drop down options. So this is where you want to limit the responses to really specific values. The first one here, drop down, single select. You may ask them a question 
and you have three or four different answers and you only want them to select one answer. The drop down multi select will allow someone to go in and maybe you ask them a question and you say select all that apply. So if you've got five different answers in there, they could select all five of them if they chose. You could also add in a column where it's a checkbox. So you could give them kind of a true or false type of scenario and they could check the checkbox. You could add in symbols and so forth. So again, for the purpose of this column, I want people to type in their name, text and number. So you'll see here that I have all of my questions typed up here. You will find that there's character limitations. I think I've maxed it out on this particular column. So let me go to rename column just so I can show you. There is a limit on characters that you can enter in here. So if you've got some really long questions that you want to ask, once we get out into the form, I can show you how you can add those in. But you still want to make sure that you're naming your column a shortened version so you know what the actual responses relate to. So again, you're not necessarily limited in the form to these characters, but for the purpose of the spreadsheet and the back end where you're going to be getting the information, it's going to be really helpful to name that accordingly. Okay, so we've got our spreadsheet or our grid set up here. I want people's names and then a series of questions that I'm going to ask them about office space. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to go up to forms. You'll see it's already a option that you can select from. And I don't have a form yet, so I don't need to click on manage forms. I want to create a form. I'm gonna click on create form here and look at that. It actually creates it for you and it's pretty much verbatim what you have in your grid. So we want to make this even better. We want to modify it a bit. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. You have the option to name it something different than you have named your actual grid. So I'm gonna to try to get people excited. Welcome to 2021 and we'll call it office space requirements form. And then we wanna to explain to people down here a description It's gonna put some additional text below. So there you go. I've got it in here. Whatever you type right there is gonna give them text below. So you can type any type of specific instructions that you wanna share. I wrote, since we are moving into 2021, we want to know your office space requirements for the year. Please fill out this form in its entirety. You can also see that there's a toggle button right here. Do not show title and description. So if you wanted to turn off or remove the title and description, you could go ahead and toggle that on. If we wanted to divide this into sections to break it up a little bit, we could do that as well. You'll see over here that I could add additional heading and descriptions, dividers. You could even include a file upload if you wanted. So I think I'll go ahead and put a divider after department and name. So I'm just gonna drag this over and put it where I want it. So you'll see it just provides a nice little divider there so it can help break up the survey a little bit. I think I will drag this last question, any budgetary considerations for this space. I think I wanna put that before this last question, what is unique about how you work? So you'll see I just clicked on it and dragged it up. Now what I wanna do, I wanna make sure that we're good to go as far as each of these different questions that I have in the survey or fields that I have in the surveyor form. So you can click on each of these and you'll see this says department. If I wanted to label this or rename this, I would enter it right in this label section. So as I mentioned earlier, if you have a really long question and it won't fit on your grid, then you can go ahead and rename this. So let me just put So department in which you work. I'll just go ahead and change that. You see I typed it right in here and it automatically shows up on the form. 
Then we've got a name right here. And let's say I don't want to ask every single question. I want to go ahead and remove. I want this to just be a 12 month survey. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that out. Okay, so you'll see that what I did was just drag that question about June 2021 over here. Another option is that you can just delete it. So how many permanent workstations do you need? Okay, I started thinking about it. We're really not going to have any temporary workstations because we already have hotel space set up. So let me just remove that from the survey. Maybe we'll need that at a future date. It removes it from the form and you'll see it popped over there into fields. So what I'm gonna do is click through each of these and make sure they're set up correctly. Department in which you work, that's the label. If I need to add any help text, then I can go ahead and add it right here. I think this field is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to add help text. You'll see that there are also some options here. I can turn this on. You'll see it added a little asterisk. So this is a required field. If you really want everyone to answer every single question, then what you will want to do is make each of the fields required for the actual survey. You can also hide the fields within the survey. So let me just hide the name for a moment. I'm gonna turn it back on. How many people are currently in your department? Again, if you wanna add any label or help text, feel free. How many people do you expect in the department in December of 2021? How many permanent workstations do you need? What type of workspace is best for your team? This is a field that when I was back in the grid, I set up as a multi-select. So what you're going to see over here is the default value, it's gonna be blank, but these are all of the options that I allow people to check. So solid wall offices with doors, cubicles or open design, privacy space for confidentiality, focus rooms for heads down work, a dedicated conference room. Since I want everyone to select all that apply, I will add help text and say, please select all that apply. So you'll now see which type of workspace is best for your team. Please select all that apply. It's gonna be a drop down menu and they'll be able to select all of those. How many square feet do you need for your team? So that may be something that people aren't sure how to answer. So I'm gonna add some help text. Best practice is 150 to 250 square feet per employee. So that will give them kind of a best practice to work with there. Any budgetary considerations for this space and what is unique about how you work? What is unique about how you work? They're probably going to need quite a bit of space to explain some additional information within this form. And you'll see here that right now it's just a single line text box. I wanna give them something more to work with. So I'm going to switch this to a multi-line text box. That'll give three lines but I think that we better give them 15 lines because some of the departments are really big. They may need to explain different segments of their department. So I'm gonna give them 15 lines to work with. I think I'll give them the same for budgetary considerations. I'm gonna switch that to multi-line text box. It's gonna to default to the previous value. So it's already going to have 15 lines in there. Everything else looks good to go. I think we are happy with what this form looks like right now. I'm going to go ahead and go up to share form because I'm going to send everyone a link and ask them to fill this out. So once I click on share form, you'll see changes have been made to this form. Would you like to save changes? Yes. I love it that it prompts you to save. And then you can email this out if you choose. You can add people's contact information. The subject is going to default 
to the name of the form, welcome to 2021 office space requirements form. And then you could type in, you know, please fill this out in its entirety. You can also, if you email, select CC me. So you get a copy of this form when it's sent out, which is really nice. I want to copy a link because I want to share a link in various places. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that link and you'll see it's copied to the clipboard there. And I can take that away and type my own email or post it on a website with additional information. You also have the option to embed here. So if you're looking for an embed code, here you go right here. Let's take a look at what the form looks like on the end user side. It's not going to look exactly like this because again, this is where we're designing it, but it's gonna look very similar. So I'm gonna just open a new tab here. I'm gonna copy and paste the form and you'll see this is what it's gonna look on the end user side. So this is the name of the form. This is the instructions. You'll see the mandatory field here with the little asterisk it will make someone fill that out before they click submit. See, when I tried to go down, it says this field is required. So I'm gonna say marketing, name, Candace Porter, how many people in your department? Five. How many people do you expect in 2021? We're gonna double, so 10. How many permanent workstations do you need? 10. What type of workspace is best for your team? So we are a marketing team. We really like the open design concept. So I'm gonna select that. However, sometimes we need to be creative. I'm going to select focus room for heads down work. And then sometimes we're talking with clients, so we're gonna need privacy space for confidentiality. So those are the three options that I'm gonna select there. How many square feet do you need for your team? We're, we've said that we need 10 different spaces and I'm gonna go on the high end here. So we're gonna multiply 250 times 10. We need a minimum of 2,500 square feet. Any budgetary considerations for this space? No, fully funded for the year. And then what is unique about how you work? We love open design plans and need privacy on occasion. The beautiful thing is that people can select, send me a copy of my responses and then enter their email address in there. So once they submit the form, they will also have a copy of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Candice at effectiveflowconnections.com. Let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, success, we've captured your response. Let's go back to our original form here. We want to move back into the grid so that we can see what's going on because we know that we have one response. We are back in our grid, let's refresh this. You'll see it's pulling the new information and voila. So here we go. You will see department name, how many people are currently in your department. Remember we removed these two fields. How many people do you expect in your department in June, 2021? And we removed the how many temporary workstations do you need? Because we have hotel space, so we didn't need those answered right now. Everything else is answered in this form. So we can go and we can take a look. And I do wanna point out in the form, I drug some of the fields around so it would flow a little bit more. You will see that once you come to the back end to the spreadsheet, this is going to remain exactly how you set it up originally. As you start getting form responses, you could put some fields in here that you're using for tracking. Maybe I want to insert a column to the left. I want to have an auto kind of number system and I want to have a modified date in there. We're going to go ahead and add that. So now anytime someone submits a response, it's going to add in this modified date. Let's take a look and see if that's showing up in the form now. We're going to go ahead and go back to manage forms at this point. 
there it is right there. It's active, one submission, welcome to 2021. Let's click on that and you will see that that field did not automatically add because it's just intended to show you for that particular field when something was modified. So that does not automatically get added to your form. What I wanna show you now is if you want to export this into Excel or something else to work with, sometimes someone doesn't have access to Smartsheet, maybe they need a copy of the information. So let's go back to Office Space Requirements. We didn't make any changes to the form, so we didn't need to save. We can close this out. If I wanna export, I'm gonna go File, and you will see that there's some options here for exporting down below. I can export to Microsoft Excel, to a PDF, to Google Sheets. So I'm just going to select Microsoft Excel here. It's exporting down here, it's ready to rock. You will see the modified date here. So this is when the form was submitted. Marketing, Candace Porter, you'll see all of the details. So you can clean this up. It'll just kind of export with the raw data. So if I wanted to enable editing, and maybe on this first row, I wanna wrap text, so it wraps down, you can see all the questions. So you can then go ahead and save this Excel and share it with whoever you'd like. Thank you for joining me today. Again, we took a look at how you can create a form within Smartsheet, which is awesome to share with end users. This could be used as a survey again for help desk tracking, anything that you need to gather data from multiple people. So a really easy way for them to submit a form and then on the back end, you get all of the data you need. It's easy to export into Excel or into PDF. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something from it. I would love if you have any questions about anything that I covered today, please go ahead and comment below. I'm Candace Porter. I hope that you'll check out some of my other videos focused on project management. I have a much longer video on introduction to Smartsheet and how you can create a project schedule. Have a great day.